Uh, let us pray. Let the words of my heart and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. What does it mean to follow Christ? This is a question that I found myself repeatedly turning to this summer. As I interacted with the youth and families, what is it that we are calling them to? I love youth for their unguarded honesty. One youth challenged me, why do you want to be a priest? Don't you work long hours and get paid very little? Another youth thought Christianity is a good moral way to live, but it lacked relevance in his life. With the recent events around the world, the question of why we should follow God was deep in many of our hearts. I found myself asking these questions again. How do we share the gospel in contexts where people do not see their need for Christ? How do we deal with the discouragement and loneliness when resistance, rejection, and persecution come? Is the call to follow Christ safe? Today's gospel passage deals with these questions head on. Christ took his disciples to a place that was rampant with idolatry. He asked his disciples who people say he is. After a few answers, he made things personal. Who do you say that I am? Peter boldly claims that Jesus is the Messiah, the son of the living God. From this moment on, the conversation turned to preparing the disciples for what was about to happen. The road ahead was a cross and would be filled with suffering. Not quite the glorious and triumphant road Peter expected with his declaration that Jesus is the Messiah. Their beloved leader was going to be killed by the religious and political leaders of the day. It is Peter who speaks boldly again, this shall never happen to you. If that wasn't difficult enough to swallow, Jesus then explained what it means to follow him. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for you to gain the whole world yet forfeit your soul? Up until then, the disciples were simply told to follow Jesus. But these intense words of Christ call for something far more radical than sheep following their shepherd around all day. And it did not hold the glory and prestige of being in the company of the one who would triumph over a Roman rule. It's pretty easy to be enamored by a miracle worker. Who wouldn't want to follow the one who can turn water into the best wine, feed thousands of people with just a few loaves, and who can raise people from the dead. However, the Christ that we are called to follow is the one who was mocked and crucified. We are not forced to follow Christ. Those who are disappointed by this leader are free to find another who promises them the peace and goods that they want. In a consumeristic society such as ours, there are plenty of options for those looking for a thrill or a quick fix. Theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer writes, nobody can be forced. Nobody can even be expected to come. However, if you want to be God's disciple, the cross is central. <coughs> Once we desire to follow God, the next step is not optional. We must deny ourselves. There is no half-heartedness about this denial. We must abandon our desires, our will, our plans, and our security. Again, Bonhoeffer writes, to, de to deny oneself, is to be aware only of Christ and no more of self, to see only him who goes before and no more the road which is too hard for us. Interestingly, the Greek word for deny in this passage is used only here and when Peter de denies Christ. When Peter denies Christ, he places his own security, fears, and needs first. He forgets for a few moments that all, all that he has learned about Christ all that he has seen, and all that Christ has promised. Yet it is when we deny ourselves that we are able to see the concerns of God instead of being focused on our own ways and understandings. Or as Bonhoeffer writes, only when we have become completely oblivious of ourselves are we ready to bear the cross for his sake. I find that I am never as aware of my insecurities, flaws, and false motives as when I am in ministry. 
They may not be visible to others, but as soon as I step into leadership position, they are all there staring at me. My experience is also that personal challenges escalate as opportunities to share Christ's love increases. It is often the most publicly successful moments that I am counting the, cross, the cost of the cross I've been called to take up. The call to follow Christ, to deny ourselves and take up our cross is difficult. I don't think there is a way to sugarcoat this, nor do I think we should. I recently heard a televangelist say that worship is primarily for us, not God, and that we should worship so that we are happy and that God only wants our happiness. This hasn't been my experience of the Christian faith or life itself. The call to follow God is not about me or my happiness. One author writes, the Christian life is not hard to live. It is utterly impossible to live. Only one can live it. Let him in you. It is in Christ that we find joy and peace that passes all understanding. There is nothing more beautiful than witnessing God at work, and in those moments, the cross I carry pales in comparison. During our youth weeks at Circuit, we found ourselves dealing with challenges we had not encountered before. The dynamics had shifted so drastically that we could not run the program as designed. At the end of one very long day, my staff asked me for advice. I honestly was lacking wisdom and solutions myself, but I knew one thing, we must pray together as well as support one another in the struggle. I have to say, that week seemed impossible and I thought about cancelling the program. We have made a commitment to pray together each morning. This had been our intent all along but I allowed the demands of the day to take priority. If the youth came early, they were invited to join us. And some mornings there were 10 of us praying together on the couches over there. The liturgy we prayed reminded us that Christ goes before us, with us, and is there when we leave. And it invited Christ to be in our hearts as we speak, but also in the hearts of those who speak to us. It also asks for a daily affirmation of our desire to love and follow God with our whole hearts, minds, souls, and strength. There are many days I don't feel I have much to offer God, but if he wants it, I'll give him what I have. Morning prayer had us connecting with the one who walks with us. It reminded us that we are not alone and desperately needed God to help us. We asked our own support networks to uplift us in prayer. We frequently met as a team to listen, support, and encourage one another. I have a greater understanding of why Jesus sent his disciples out in pairs. You simply cannot do this work alone. The challenges didn't get easier. However, the impossible became possible through prayer, and we witnessed miracles. And that makes all the sweat and tears worth it. As we enter another fall with all its beginnings, my prayer today is that we will deny ourselves so that we can carry the cross to which we are called, and that as we lose ourselves to be consumed by God's ways, we will discover more of the abundant life he promises. So I close with a prayer. Lord, your summons echoes true when you but call our names. Let us turn and follow you and never be the same. And your company will go for your love and footsteps show. Thus we'll move and live and grow in you and you and us. Amen.